this is a soft cane dendrobium that I bought at an orchid show about a month ago. Its name is Yukidorama King. Beautiful clear white flowers with a deep purple throat and a pink outer labellum. You can also see the size of the roots on those kikis that we're going to remove today. There's its name. You can see there's a couple of really big kikis up here, up the top, one there, one there, that have got huge root systems on them. That's at least eight, nine inches along those roots. So I assume the guy that sold it to me has got sufficient of these kings. He doesn't want any more and he's left them on the plant. So today what we're going to do is we're going to pot them up on some bark. There's a the flower, beautiful flower. Beautiful clear white flowers with a deep purple throat and a pink outer labellum. You can also see the size of the roots on those kikis that we're going to remove today. There is a queen version of this which has got some more yellow inside the lip. So that and that are the two kikis we're going to pot up today. And I'd say that this guy here, this one here, will pot up normally. We'll start off tying these two onto some apricot limbs that I cut off a tree recently and have prepared. Right, you can see the flowers are starting to die off. But what we'll do, we'll remove the kikis first. And I'll take this guy off here. Once I've undone the flowers, you just hold it in your hand and spin it round until it snaps off, being a bit careful of the roots because you don't want to damage those. It is a tight one. There we go. So, having removed the kiki, we now need to put some cinnamon on the spot where we took it from mum and on the bottom of the kiki. Cinnamon is a natural fungicide and that'll keep any problems away from us. Now, up to these couple of big ones up here. We'll take them off now. Massive roots on those things. Spin it round, backwards and forwards a little bit until it snaps off. And there we have it. Do the roots on that. A little bit of cinnamon on the tear where it came off. Put that over there. And some cinnamon on the mother plant also so it doesn't get infected. And one more to go for today. We'll have to be careful this one has got a new growth coming on it. That's the kiki there and the mass of roots on it. All right, cinnamon on the kiki, dab it on there, put it over the back and then find the part of the mother plant we took the kiki from and smother it there with some cinnamon. All right, I'll hang the plant up again now. We'll do more work on that later but that just removes it for the moment. So we can get down to our task. All right, that's one. This is the other one we're going to put onto a piece of bark today. I'll remove those flowers first. We don't want them taking nutrient out of the plant. All right, I'll put those two aside. This is the first one that we're going to put on some bark. This is a piece of apricot branch we're going to put it on. You can see I've already stapled some 50% shade cloth on this. We're going to put some live sphagnum moss on the base here. Then we're going to put the, the kiki on it, turn it round because it's got a new growth on it, like so. Then we'll put some more sphagnum moss on the top. Then we're going to wrap this around to hold it onto the piece of timber. All right, so we'll start off getting some sphagnum moss this is alive and growing as you can see and it's rather healthy so what we'll do first is I'll determine where we're going to put this plant I would say about there I'll have to cut a slot for where the new growth is but I'll do that before we put the mesh on all right we'll put some sphagnum moss there and I'll align the plant where I want it to be now We'll have a quick look and see 
where actually if I drop that down a tiny bit it might be a better option yeah I think so and I'll cut some of that top out too in a moment that's a bit large right I get some more sphagnum moss put it over the top and we'll work out a rough amount of the 50% shade cloth we want to hold it on and I would say that we would cut it about there so I grab a pair of scissors and we've cut that up there now also we want to be careful of this new growth down here so I'll bend this shade cloth up high enough so that it will pass over the top of that like so and also the top I will bend down because that's a bit too generous I think so that is looking you can see the new growth there on the bottom not looking too bad so I'll now double that over so it holds all the ends together and then staple it down to hold it in place and then there's the first one there's a hook we'll hold it with I'll turn that round that looks better We've got our sphagnum moss in there I'll poke that up under there now I'll get some water the sphagnum moss is now wet as you can see there the top of the roots the new growth will be able to grow there unaffected all right that's the first one now we'll do the second one Massive long roots on it here. Right, get some sphagnum moss again. Pull it out. Work out where we want to put the, the plant. I would think I'll cut that old flower raceme off. Put some cinnamon on that. Keep the infection out. And we'll place this one, I would say there. All right, so we'll start getting some sphagnum moss ready. Put the, put the plant on top where we want it to be. So it comes out there. Some more sphagnum moss once again. It's a bit generous, I'll take a bit of that off. We don't need quite that amount. Take that off there and then we'll wrap our shade cloth around holding the plant in place and pulling it relatively tight all right there we go now i'll have to pull the plant down a bit because when it throws a new growth it's going to come from there so i'll have to pull that up a little bit higher that's better that's looking all right so pull that tightly around work out how much material we want i'd say about there put it down bend both ends over so that it finishes up relatively neatly cut the excess off and then staple it in place and there's our second one all ready to go so i'll water that you can see it's nice and wet now so i'll hang it up with the other one and i'll take a photo of it all right we've got two more kikis from king there they are this growth looks like it might have had a dendrobium beetle in it by the look of it i'll have to keep an eye on that all right this is a mix we're going to use fine fur bark and a little bit of cocoa peat simply because it's getting warmer of late and we want to retain a little bit of moisture in the bark the cocoa peat will do just that all right first up have a look and see how high we want the plant to be about there and then we'll start filling in our potting media around the kiki up at the top there that's how easy it is there's the tag put that in there put that aside grab the next pot this one has got very long roots and a lot of good growing tips on them look at the apical mirror stems on those wow that's cool so I don't want to break them off so I'll put this kiki at the back of the pot here and start filling in around it that way we can keep it high and up up without hurting the roots those massive long roots on it 
there we go that'll go into the orchid house and be watered in a moment there's our dendrobium nobly kiki nice healthy roots on it you can see the cinnamon i've put on it to keep any infections away now we'll load up a pot see how deep we want the kiki to be in the middle of the pot preferably that way it can grow in any direction if you put it up to the front of the back then the new growth will get stymied by the pot push them down that pot's a little bit bigger than usual but I've run out of three inch pots so we'll have to use that and there's an overly kiki very easily done here we go I'll go and hang those in the orchid house now and water them and they can start to settle in on their new home